the Mughal Empire, an ancient Gurkhani empire that was located within the Indian subcontinent. Founded in 1526, a tremendous amount of information regarding this group of warriors has subsequently been unearthed over the centuries. A wealth of archaeological information, which has offered a glimpse back into our distant past, revealing many things about this ancient people, which, for a time, was lost in antiquity. However, although extensive archaeological exploration has unraveled many of the Mughals' mysterious existence, there remains a most perplexing enigma. In the 1980s, Smithsonian historian Emily Savage Smith embarked on a journey to acquire a set of perplexing ancient artifacts, now known as celestial spheres. Plotted upon the underside of a dome or hemispherical screen, the celestial sphere is a practical tool for astronomy even to this day, allowing the observers to plot positions of objects in the sky when distances are unknown or trivial. Most, as one would presume, display a primitive understanding of astronomical arrangements. However, some reluctantly revealed to the academic world, and since quietly archived away from inquisitive souls, have stumped all who have attempted to explain them based solely upon modern historical conformities. The majority of celestial spheres acquired can be cataloged into two distinct types – seamed spheres and their more elaborate, thus greatly more problematic counterparts, seamless spheres. Seamed spheres are, or were, made by molding two halves of the sphere separately and then soldering them together. The artisans and astronomers would then collaboratively engrave the surface. Seamless spheres, however, are another thing entirely. Up until Savage Smith made her discovery, it was thought by virtually all within the academic community, including metallurgists the world over, that all examples of hollow metal celestial spheres were of the seamed type. This owing to the long-held belief that creating seamless hollow metal spheres was impossible. As it turns out, it isn't. The most exquisite surviving example of a hollow seamless celestial sphere is one that is said to have been made by a Mughal metallurgical master named Muhammad Salid Tatawi in 1631. Although conveniently, it is unknown just how he figured out how to make the sphere, or indeed fill it accurately with astronomical information we have only recently confirmed as accurate. It makes one wonder just how did he learn such a technique, if of course it was he who created it. With no evidence to suggest that the Mughals could have even cast the bronze needed to create the sphere, you have to wonder, just where did they get this information from? Were the ancient Mughals visited by a race of ancient extraterrestrial beings? Did they discover a relic, an artifact, left by a vastly more ancient lost civilization which they claimed as their own? Unfortunately, the subject of seamless celestial spheres is little known within mainstream antiquity, and as such, in the few places they are discussed, the facts are often distorted or even completely made up. They are most certainly out-of-place artifacts, which some have attempted to brush beneath a rug of convolution. We always perceive this method of concealment to be strong evidence of a conspiracy. Just who could have made the Mughal celestial spheres? And more importantly, how did they make them? Perhaps one day, we will find out the truth. Many attributed the legend surrounding the great king of Uruk and many of the city's written attributes to mythology. Uruk is said to have become famous as the capital city of the King Gilgamesh, the ancient ruler and hero of the epic of Gilgamesh. It is believed that Uruk was the biblical Erech from Genesis 10.10, the second city founded by Nimrod in Shinar. The epic of Gilgamesh, written by a Middle Eastern scholar 2,500 years before the birth of Christ, commemorates the life of the ruler of the city of Uruk from which Iraq gets its name. In 2003, just prior to the Iraq invasion which toppled Hussein, astonishing discoveries were being made in Iraq, culminating in one of the most extraordinary claims anywhere for centuries, a claim which American forces have been strongly accused of confiscating, subsequently becoming the prime suspect as the driving force behind a complete suppression of these astonishing discoveries within the country. In April of 2003, 
Jörg Fassbinder of the Bavarian Department of Historical Monuments in Munich, told the BBC's World Services Science and Action program, quote, I don't want to say definitively that it was the grave of King Gilgamesh, but it looks very similar to that described in the epic. We found just outside the city, an area in the middle of the former Euphrates River, the remains of such a building which could be interpreted as a burial, Mr. Fassbinder said. In the book, Gilgamesh is described as having been buried under the Euphrates. He said the amazing discovery of the ancient city under the Iraqi desert had been made possible by modern technology. The most surprising thing was that we found structures already described by Gilgamesh, Mr. Fassbinder stated. We covered more than 100 hectares. We found garden structures and field structures as described in the epic, and we found Babylonian houses. Here, predictably, is where the story goes silent. Due to conflict within the country, it was largely believed the excavations had been halted. However, it seems that the discovery of King Gilgamesh may not have been made in isolation. This footage was supposedly leaked to numerous places across the internet, and has largely been put down as authentic footage of the find. Shortly after this was taken, reports state that American forces moved in and seized the find. Why do the powers that be see fit to suppress such discoveries? The very real tombs of characters long thought to have been mythical. Osiris being but one example among many, which have undoubtedly been hidden from the public. Maybe some clues to why his tomb has been hidden lay within the epic, and the immense powers Gilgamesh was said to have possessed. He was the fifth king of Uruk, and his power was so mighty, many believe that the stories surrounding him are just myths that were built around his seemingly superhuman strength and endurance. However, Serious scholars concluded that the story of Gilgamesh was nothing more than a fairy tale due to the astonishing story. In the epic, the great king is thought to be too proud and arrogant by the gods, and so they decide to teach him a lesson, sending the wild man, Enkidu, to humble him. Enkidu and Gilgamesh, after a fierce battle in which neither are bested, become friends and embark on adventures together. When Enkidu is struck with death, Gilgamesh falls into a deep grief and, recognizing his own mortality through the death of his friend, questions the meaning of life and the value of human accomplishment in the face of ultimate extinction. Casting away all his old vanity and pride, Gilgamesh sets out on a quest to find the meaning of life and, finally, some way of defeating death. In doing so, he becomes the first epic hero in world literature. The grief of Gilgamesh and the questions his friend's death evoke, resonate with every human being who has wrestled with the meaning of life in the face of death. Is this leaked footage of the tomb of Gilgamesh? Regardless of its authenticity, why all the secrecy? Are we, as a species, not capable of being presented with things which test our core beliefs without erupting into chaos? It seems for now we may have to wait to find out. Arce. The American Research Center in Egypt. Arsi's website states as follows. Among Arsi's many great achievements is our relationship with the Supreme Council of Antiquities, the SCA, within the Egyptian Ministry of Culture, without whom our work would not be possible. Arsi is viewed as making important contributions that serve to help Egypt directly in its pursuit of cultural heritage preservation. What this statement confesses to is the implication and more than likely collaboration with Egyptian authorities to cover up the real truth about ancient Egypt. In 1992, German robotics engineer Rudolf Gantenbrick was exploring shafts within the Queen's Chamber at the Great Pyramid, using a crawler robot he had designed himself. His intentions were to install an air conditioning system within the pyramid's existing design. While exploring these ancient tunnels, he discovered one of the shafts was blocked by a tiny limestone blocking door, a secret doorway only accessible with the use of robotic technology. Rudolf Gantenbrick, who was able to map, explore, and analyze the shafts for many years, believed a second door would have suggested the possibility that there would be yet another 40 centimeters further away. His hypothesis, based on the knowledge that many ancient Egyptian funerary monuments were equipped with a series of three blocking doors 
place close to each other in succession before the entrance to a sacred tomb. In 2002, the National Geographic Society discovered this second door. Using their own robot known as Pyramid Rover, this event, closely supervised by RC, who subsequently pulled the plug on the whole operation regarding the shafts. The team had a simple solution to Gantenbrick's problem. They sent the robot along the shaft, gripping the walls instead of the ceiling and floor. In this manner, it was somehow able to ride over the top of the obstacles. The rover's journey along the northern shaft revealed yet another door, just as Gantenbrick's claimed. Mysterious hieroglyphs, written on the floor of the hidden tunnels within Egypt's Great Pyramid, were shown to the world in an initial report on the robot's discoveries, published within the Du Service des Antiquities. The images revealed features that had not been seen by human eyes since the construction of the monument. Researchers from around the world were particularly intrigued by three red ochre figures painted upon the tunnel's end deep inside the pyramid. Books such as Giza the Truth by Chris Harold and Ian Lawton the Stargate Conspiracy by Lynn Picknett and Clive Prince, and Secret Chamber by Robert Balville have all, thanks to the tremendous and diligent research accomplished within, shed light upon the controversy surrounding the Giza Plateau and the Secret Chamber's existence. The key question, the theme witnessed throughout these studies, was whether information has been withheld, discoveries undisclosed, and an understanding of the pyramids and Sphinx's existence purposefully kept hidden from the world. On the 22nd of March, 1993, Dr. Zawi Hawass was suspended from his position as chief inspector of the Giza Pyramid Plateau. It seems Gantenbrick took an opportunity, while the powers that be were distracted, to announce his findings to the world press in early April. It would appear, after substantial digging, that the string pullers within Egypt originate out of America and are stationed within Egypt in the form of Arce. The truth regarding what is buried beneath these ancient structures may still remain a mystery, but realizing the obstacles obstructing an understanding of this truth is half the battle won. <laughs>